jump into this. Thank you for the patience, guys. Just a bit of a few surfer issues getting going. But we are set right now as we have to the bottom right-hand side. Our blue Protoss player, this is Creator. And to the upper left-hand side, the red Zerg player, this is Bly from Team Expert, of course. And didn't mention it, but Creator, of course, from Gen Air Green Wings, one of the few remaining Korean teams. Oh, now joined by Titan 1X. It's, uh, it's another Korean team on the, uh, you know, on the fields. So very exciting stuff as we do get set up. And we get ready to go into this game number one of this series. Again, let me know who you guys are cheering on out in the chat. Let me know if you're cheering on Bly today. Let me know if you're cheering on Creator. And let's get excited for this first CVP of the day. Again, we're going through all of our initial Korean Protoss matches first. So Creator will be playing the next three series. With a mixture of games coming in from DNS, Soul, and Bly, of course, throughout the course of the day. It's a round robin best of three group, which means that we just play all six best of threes, no matter what. And the top two players will advance to the playoffs, which will take place next Wednesday, so a week tomorrow. So we really have this event quite compact, you know, a few days this week and a couple of days next week. And uh, just bring you guys a whole bunch of action, basically. Just so you have some StarCraft to keep your, you know, keep yourselves uh, seated or keep yourselves uh, kind of happy with. It's uh, kind of leading up into a bit of a strange time for us because we're actually going to be, so when I go away, so next week I go away Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then after that, a couple of weeks later, I go away to Canada for BTSL, and I'm taking a small vacation uh, for a few days over in New York where I might actually be able to stream, which would be kind of cool because I would be kind of down to stream some stuff. Um, but there is kind of, um, I'm going to be having some downtime because I'm going to be going to BTSL Canada, obviously. Then New York, then I'm going to be in Philadelphia for a few days with Penguin. We're hoping to do maybe a tournament while we're over there. Um, fingers crossed. So, I think there should be some streams. It's just not going to be super regular. Like, not every single day cracking out the StarCraft, you know? And then, um, after that we do go into the, um, what's after that, guys? Remind me, because I am absolutely useless at reminding myself what's going on. Oh, uh, I actually have no idea at all. Uh, yeah, after that it's WCS Austin, which is why I'm staying in America, basically. I'm basically going to America or Canada for BTSL, and I'm spending some time there until I go to Austin for WCS. So it's a bit of a weird month, May, honestly, on the channel for us. I know we're not even in May yet, but it is a bit of a strange month, but, you know, it should be all right. It should come out being... We should have a few streams here and there. You're going to be able to watch me at a couple different events, such as BTSL. I'm going to do some, you know, stream from some places while I'm around. It's just not going to be super regular, Woody. So just a heads up on that, just so that you guys sort of just want, just can stop saying it, so that you know, guys know what's going on. If uh, if I, you know, if you see me not online for a couple of days here or a couple of days there, for example, so do my best to keep you updated. But the earlier we start saying it, generally the better it is for people to know what is happening. Well, that is the first few minutes of the game wrapped up, though. First three minutes or so, and we already have the first tech choice from Creator, which is just the Stargate and a Phoenix. Obviously, the first Adept is already doing what the first Adept does, which is to sit across the map here, poke on in towards the mineral lines, and just see if it can find an opportunity to get a little bit of damage done, whether it can pick off a couple of drones or not. For now, though, it looks as though the Adept is just going to turn away and back on towards the bottom right-hand side of the map instead. Phoenix coming through. And he's going to be seeing this overall taking a little bit more damage, so... But we've taken some hits from this Phoenix Oracle on the way out of this Stargate. We're going to be seeing another gateway just dropping down in the main alongside Twilight Council. So, just a single Oracle then doesn't really have the gas now to build a second one. And that means the Twilight Council is pretty quick. And I wonder what Creator is going to go for here. I mean, with a Twilight and not a Robo, it sort of, to me, says something more along the lines of let's build resonating glaives. Because if this was a Robo, then you would be able to imagine a Warp Prism, then the Temple Archives comes down nicely timed out, etc. But there's no rush towards the Robo Facility and hence the Warp Prism here, so definitely feels more like Resonating Glaives alternatively. I mean, DTs don't really make a lot of sense now in terms of what we usually see. Alternatively, he pulls out of gases and he goes charge, is my other kind of real uh, choice here, or kind of real theory, but obviously still mining gas, that doesn't seem to be the case. So Resonating Glaive starts being Corona boosted out, and it is now the Robo dropping down, in which you'll probably get a Warp Prism out of, but probably also just a single, uh, you know, Immortal as well, because quite often with these Resonating Glaives attacks, you do go for a very powerful follow-up push, where you attack with the initial Adept and Glaives, and then you go in towards the follow-up, which is a couple of Immortals, a few Sentries mixed in, and you have another push while that Resonating Glaives is still so very powerful in the early stages of the game. So setting that up, if the Hydralis Den comes down here from Bly, we do see still this uh, Phoenix and the Oracle trying to do a little bit more, but unfortunately not going to be able to find too much more. I mean, I say more because already this Oracle did grab five kills. The Phoenix on a kill as well, just an Overlord early on. 
There's just been some nice initial damage here from our Protoss player. As Bly, though, the thing is, he lost five drones, but in fairness, he did do this without spore crawlers. So, by doing this without spore crawlers, he's not really going to be having, you know, have, he doesn't really have that issue where. Um, he doesn't even have that sort of issue where he, uh, you know, invested, what, like three to four drones into spores, and if he doesn't do that, then, you know, losing five drones, it kind of makes up for it, plus he has more minerals to spend, so it's actually a little bit better than usual, despite the kind of fact he did lose a few drones here, as there is this warp prism on the way out, it is just a single immortal for now, a few more adepts, looks like this might be a bit of a faster attack as the adepts coming across the map right away, and then the immortal kind of tagging along, maybe not so many sentries with this, although he does have a fair amount of gas to warp in from. He does want to add sentries in, obviously though, the sooner you add those, the better it is, because the more time they have to build up the energy to be able to use those force fields, which are just going to be so very important. Bly pulls back in towards the natural expansion, Lings and Hydra is joining together here. A few queens as well as the revelation goes down. And we are just going to be seeing these adepts going to start shading forwards to see just what they can get up to in the next few moments. So, the depth shade and fruit, we do see the pl plus one missile attack upgrade coming in on the evolution chamber. Again, a few more hydras and a few more lings coming through here as we see as a depth just shading up to the high ground. And we are going to be seeing the uh, lings and hydras just good enough to uh, kind of scare those adepts from really kind of committing through. Extra gateways coming down as the Nexus gets taken in the back. But again, I mean, the extra gates really is just the telltale sign of let's get aggressive. You know, we don't see a forge here. We don't see a setup which is going to allow Crit to just macro on through as the game continues. There's the few sentries we're talking about for this attack. I'm kind of surprised this is only one immortal. It feels those robots have just been inactive for a very long time. And, I, you know, is it worth maybe sacrificing a couple of adepts for an extra immortal? I personally kind of think so, but... That said, if it's a Ling Hydra Force, which Bly does know about, maybe it's just a little bit better for it to be uh, kind of a depth focus rather than having an extra immortal in here. There's quite a few Hydras. I wonder what Creator is going to do. It looks as though he's just going to keep moving across the map. But he just lost his Cyber Next Core, which means he can't warp into depths in response to this. Huh, Stasis Ward catches quite a lot of these drones. The half the mineral line, currently not mining. Creator is just going to go for this. So he's going to commit on in. He's going to do some real damage himself. I mean, there isn't anything from Zly, you know, in reasonable numbers to defend at home. I guess the idea is from Creator is that he has enough of an army to kind of win this fight over here right now, then to recall home and to have at least kind of Mac, you know, sort of equalize the damage dealt. But he's taking a lot of damage. You know, Gateway is going down, Robo Facility going down. There's a few more depth walking in up on this high ground. So everything is walking aggressively here from Creator as Zly. He's still just cleaning out the natural. He's not jumping up into the main. An oracle pops up. Not sure what use this oracle is going to uh, be. He's actually just going to use it to try and fight as the zealots come in. A few of the hydras going down. It's actually a big deal. The issue is no charge means he will lose a little bit of damage output here. 46 drones have gone down. Supplies taking a lot of damage. The hydra numbers really are lacking here now, though. And you can see that these zealots are low. Wow. Even if he doesn't kill all the hydras, he's killed enough of the hydras for it to kind of not really have any sort of a follow up now. To the point where, obviously, Creator has still done so much damage across this side of the map. He's got Bly down to, while he hasn't killed a hatchery, he's killed all the drones. So it's essentially kind of like being on one base right now for Bly. A couple of Hydras do pop out over here, but they just keep on going down one or two at a time. And drones are going to pull in to help out as well. They're actually pretty good against an Immortal if they get us around. Because if that dude takes up a lot of the Immortal shots fighting drones, it really isn't effective. But, in this case, it really doesn't matter. GG and Creator will take game number one of this best of as we go into game number two. Down a game to the top left-hand side is our blue Zerg player. This is Bly. Going up against the red Crawlers player to the bottom right-hand side of the map. This is from Jinair Greenwings, creator. Looking to try and take this first series of the day 2-0, despite having to play on the European server. Despite the fact that they, you know, a couple of the players today did agree to play on the NA server against creator. They, um... In the end, we'll just probably have to play on EU anyways, because Korean servers, uh, NA servers down. That's crazy to me. The NA server goes just goes down in the middle of the day. What what is that? Like it's the middle of the day for NA, you know? Well, it's at least the morning, right? It's like 10 a.m. West Coast, 1 p.m. East Coast. Like, why does the NA server go down now? At least in Europe, it's going down at like midnight, which is like you know that makes sense, right? Like that you know that's logical. Why is the NA server going down like through the day? Uh, I, I guess it's something to do with the fact that they have to work through the day, right? Like, well, if they update, they have to have people on board, and I guess for EU it's easy to update through the night, but 
Oh, that's crazy. I really thought, I guess, I guess I'm so just used to my European privilege, you know? Where, uh, you know, my European privilege where it's like, oh, you know, I'm just so used to the servers. If they ever go down, they go down at night, you know? It's, uh, kind of funny. It's like, same in World of Warcraft, in EU. You know, it always gets updated through the night. But who knows what happens in NA, apparently. Isn't that just crazy? Isn't that just crazy? Anyways, we're getting set up into this, guys. Our Nexus coming down on the natural. And we are just going to be seeing the uh, third hatch coming into play from Bly. Or the third hatch location coming in from Bly. It's not actually a third hatch just yet. Just a hatch gas pool. Uh, I don't think he was blocked by a probe or anything, right? Oh, he was. Sorry. I lost that probe on the minimap as it went on to creep. So there is a probe across here. So maybe just blocked the natural. And that's why he did end up taking the third base location instead. And there's a couple of different reasons why you can do that, of course. So that's not really too surprising here. As we do just see this uh, Nexus coming up on the natural. Yes, these players are playing on EU, which is the official tournament rules. That all matches for this tournament will be played on EU server. We didn't invite anyone to this tournament that was a Korean or living in Korea right now. We have only invited players who are living in Europe, so hence the EU. But Creator did decide to play on, you know, play in the qualifiers, which were on the EU server as well. And he went into this tournament knowing that we're playing on EU. So yes, we are playing on EU. We haven't just, you know, and Creator definitely doesn't know about it. By the way, I completely uh, forgot to mention Jim Zock of the Jim Cheer 15 as well, by the way. That's a very interesting little cheer. Was that? I don't even know what it's from. Is that, like, are they new cheers? Or party? Oh, it's a par- Oh, it's the party! Oh my god, there's new cheer modes. How exciting. Thank you so much for the Cheer 15, Jim Sock. I was wondering what it was. I couldn't quite make sense. Because it was grey, I was sort of like, oh, it just sort of looks like a- It sort of looks like the normal cheer, like, 1 to 99 mode, but only it was a little bit, like, you know, booping around a bit more. That makes a bit more sense now, doesn't it? Alright, well, we do see this Oracle on the way out here from Creator. Uh, no Phoenix this time, right? So straight into the Oracle, Triple Adept is coming across the map as well. At least two of them are. So look to apply a little bit of pressure here. And you can see, because he commits into the uh, natural third base location, he and shades in towards the main, he has to commit somewhere. So he's really looking for worker damage. And Bly has already lost four workers, although that's a really good spore placement. Because not only does it save a drone, it also blocks off with the Queen this area. So the Adepts couldn't continue to chase the drones around the hatchery. That's very, very nicely done. Well, these Zerglings are going to continue to come down towards the bottom right-hand side of the map where they're going to poke forwards, and it's going to be uh, seeing a couple of Adepts going to be fighting away at some of those Zerglings. So, I mean, the wall is completed. There's not going to be any kind of real questions here, right? And there's no real way that does Bly break through. I mean, even if he starts to, there's a shield battery that can be placed, and that just completes the wall off once again. So an Adept goes down, but that's going to be pretty much it. As the Oracle arrives, and right now only one Queen in this location and I think this is the sort of time where Bly's going to start to kind of pay for not having that Spore Crawler up compared to the last game where he was a lot better prepared with a couple of Queens here and there. He really minimized the damage the Oracle did. I guess in the end he takes only three works of damage right now. Now I talked about it last game, you know, because, you know, he considered, well, he would have been down three workers if he built Spores anyway, but at least he kept the extra minerals. But you got to remember that, you know, the Spores also have an effect throughout the rest of the game as well. There's something you can continue to use. Uh, you know, defensively, you never know when a spawn on the edge of the base suddenly catches that prism just a little bit to help out. But Bly really just choosing instead to kind of just bypass that. I think Bly's bigger issue this game was the two adepts getting four drones or so super early in this game. That really did hurt for him. As you see the robotics facility coming up now in the natural expansion. Creator will start to head across towards the upper left-hand side of the map with this oracle. As we do see that's the second oracle for him, actually. So, double oracle this game. Very different to the last. You can see the you know, Robo Facility comes down before the Twilight Council. That means we're not going to be seeing Resonating Glaives. It almost definitely says that we're going to be seeing a Temple Archives pretty quickly and the Charge Lot upgrade. It's, uh, it's even kind of early for Temple Archives, like, right away. We are going to be seeing a Wolf Person coming out straight away, though. And by the time it gets across the map, I suppose it's a large map. By the time it gets across, I suppose Temple Archives will be ready. It's more than a couple of Archons and to go from there as, oh my god, eight workers going down in combination of those Adepts on the third, plus the Oracles into the main. Fourteen workers go down, Creator. There's some awesome play here, just pulling Bly to the third base, hitting the main at the same time. And Bly is really starting to fall apart a little bit at the moment, and this isn't even one of those, oh my god, you skipped Spore Crawler things, right? Like, you know, maybe arguably the Oracles in the main wouldn't have done as much, but even if he'd only taken the damage on those two Adepts, that would have really, really sucked for him. 
22 workers lost in this game. It's not the sort of early game damage you can justify taking if you want to continue in a way that's going to allow you to kind of really close this out. This Observer coming out of the Robo facility here at the moment as well, so that's about a pop. And as the Observer pops on out, we are going to be seeing a couple of Hydras coming through the Muscular Augments is starting up on the Hydralist end. And we do have these Queens targeting down. That Oracle will get the kill, and this Phoenix now taking some damage as well. Just getting punched, pushed away just a little bit here. As the Warp Prism continues to come over in towards the main, trying to get some damage done. That's just a depth at the moment. We didn't see uh, the Archons morphing in from the Temple Archives. He's just going to use that for Storm at the moment. So Kray just trying for some little bit of extra harassment. Doesn't find too much just yet, though. As we do have, moving back towards this Watchtower, dropping down. And a couple of lanes getting picked off. Charge coming up to completion here very soon. And uh, we are going to be seeing the... A couple of high Zembler already warped in, building up that energy for when this Psionic Storm upgrade finishes. It means he's going to be able to get Storm in and start to kind of control the weather here as well. That's not quite nice. I mean, a couple of uh, sentries just caught out the front here. I mean, what do you do? Drop force fields somewhat kind of hectically. I guess it does actually save one of these sentries. Two Hydras coming forwards. Can he get the sentry? Oh my god, the target fire goes down and gets it. So that's two sentry kills. It's not bad for Bly because he only lost a few Zerglings. Hydras going forwards, has to be careful of that immortal, which can reach quite far forwards. And a few more Hydras arriving now as well. Bly has been drawn up as well, so he's not completely reliant on Hydras doing too much damage. As we are going to be seeing them just poke in the front, though it's a very risky move, kind of poke in the front, because if they do go down, there's a lot of his kind of arm which he needs to build up into higher numbers. As you see, the Cybernetic Core is being worked away way at, and it is going to go down. Uh, gateway and Cannon going to be in some trouble too. The uh, shield battery actually coming up allows the Cannon to stay alive a little bit longer. Oh, there's a storm, and obviously that's one of the things that Kray has definitely been waiting for here just a little bit. Fine, we'll just back away. He kind of knows where his limit is with this damage. <laughs> Meanwhile, Zart's actually warping in, so it's a good time to move away because he might have to just pull back here and try and defend against this. As we're going to be seeing these Hydra's links continuing to come in towards the other left hand side and. These and Hydra's working their way through. There's a couple of adepts have shaded by somewhere, but meanwhile, Zelts go into the main base, and Bly continues to take some heavy losses here at the moment. That fourth just about survives, but now drones are going down. I mean, this is all on top of the damage which he's taken early in the game. And this is still two adepts, which means they actually get themselves some target fire down, and they pick off 11 drones in total along with the other attacks. And well, this warp is going to drop a Zelt down, chase that queen away at the very least. If not, we'll be in just a couple more to finish off this hatchery. Doesn't have to be a huge commitment, but the greed here from Crater might cost him the warp prism, but he gets the hatchery. And that almost just makes it worthwhile because it keeps Bly away from this base for another, what? You know, one minute, minute and a half or so. Just stops the opportunity to take these extractors on the gases. Just stops Bly from feeling comfortable in the game as a lot of hives will go across the map now. And there's Bly building up and getting that base back up and rolling. The Lurker Den comes down now from Bly as well, so. Infestation Pit and a Lurker Den. You can tell Bly's looking towards the next stage of this game, but he's in a choke point! And the first storm does exactly what you expected to there. Lands on all of the Hydras in that choke, and it's enough to ward them away and just to make them think twice about continuing to push on forwards, though coming in yet again. A few Hydras kind of feel off to the side. Two Lings are coming forwards too. Another storm coming in. Continue to push these Lings and Hydras backwards. We pushed all the way away here as we're going to be seeing the Shield Battery. And it's going to be uh, coming up on this fourth base, so and Creator just adding to his defenses here, just adding to what is already a bit of a formidable position against Bly, who is just not currently finding a way to make something happen here. You see a few Zelts to the top side are going to get uh, chased down by those Zerglings, a nice surround. He's going to see both of those being picked off. The Spire coming down to the Hive as well, plus two missile attack on the Evolution Chamber here. Another couple of High Temple just finishing warping in. And this creator will start to move through the center. Actually, see some things in Hydra to the top side of Bly as well. You we can see one Zerglin getting taken down initially. And the Hydra's on the south side are going to be pushing in as we see the Zelt, the Archon, and the Immortal coming forwards as well. These Hydras have to keep on backing away. One Hydra goes down, another Hydra as well. Yeah, just gonna get cleaned up. It's nice ideas from Bly. He's trying to find a way to do something, but it's just not working out. Now, the one thing that may work for him here is getting up into towards perhaps the brute boards. I don't think it's going to be something creator should allow him to do. And even if he does, create is in a position where he can play against brute lords. But 
you never know what the surprise factor of Broodlords might be. If Creator thinks he's far enough ahead that there's, you know, just no way Bly gets into a good position in this, then, uh, well, then that's really going to suck just a little bit, isn't it? As we're going to be seeing the uh, couple of things going down on the south side. Watchtower is uh, cleared right there. As we do have Lurkers and Hydras coming through the center of the map. Supply setting up to see what might happen next as we do see Creator going to come around through the center as well, trying to see what else is going on. The Warp Prism of Creator continuing to pull away off over to the left hand side as well. Huge amount of units down to the south side, and we are going to be seeing still the plus three attack, the plank upgrade coming through here. The Corruptor's on the way out now, the Greatest Spy is coming through. Adaptive Talons about to finish up. It's going to be something else that Black can use somewhat aggressively and to help him out in these fights. Catches an Immortal as well, but Creator's already pushing up the left-hand side. As he gets himself into position, Bly's going to rely massively on these Lurkers to win this. He's already taken some damage over here. There's that Adaptive Talon showing you just how fast those Lurkers can burrow. Splash damage is pretty good to clean out the results quite quickly, but unfortunately it's not quickly enough. Hydra's across the map though again, some good damage done. The counter-attack is starting to find some progress here. Fly is going to actually force the recall. So a recall from Creator, he doesn't want to push in just yet. He's going into that very typical sort of backwater style game where he does start to build carries, he starts to build some extra stargates. He kind of just knows that realistically this game is not going to be under much threat of him losing as long as he just sort of hits up into carriers. A lot of the time the pros player is just looking for the chance to transition later in the game into carriers, etc. So you do see those lurkers gathering up on the fourth base. A few spine crawls just sat off to the side. And you see a few brood lords going to start morphing in. And getting ready to go. 34 zerglings starting to be produced. Plus two melee, plus one flyer attack coming into action as well. And a few more carriers just being chrono boosted here. And we do have Creator still pushing up towards the top side of the map of Watchtower being taken. One zell goes down and Queen gets picked off as well. We are still just gathering together. Spore cores continue to come forward just out the front of the fourth base. The lurkers will burrow. And as the lurkers burrow, the cybernetic score here from Freda will also start up in the third base. So it starts up right now. A couple of storms on those lanes. It's actually a lot of storms just to get rid of a few zerglings here. Plus one flyer attack coming in on the grass by at the moment. We are just going to be seeing Creator still just position himself on the edge of this group spread consistently just here. And I guess he doesn't have an observer to actually clean any of it up. But it does stop it spreading further. It stops Bly from getting too much control back on the map. It stops Bly from just doing much else. And again, if you stop Bly from doing much in this game, sure, you can build this army, which is pretty freaking good. But you yourself, you're building up carriers. And what does Bly do to stop that? Well, not really very much at all. Not really very much at all. We are going to be seeing a uh, couple of swords continue to burrow down to the side. So we throw a couple of queens went down the center. The Immortal going to get picked off too. Attempts to kind of split some units off here from Creator. I kind of feel like he might just be trying to bleed off a couple of units to be able to kind of have the supply free for the next kind of carry, you know, rave of carrier production. Although this is maybe a couple more units than he uh, bargained for. Brood Lords maybe do come in as a bit of a surprise here, but again, how do you really fight this when those carriers are already stacked up in very good numbers? And that's just a kind of sign as to how far Bly, you know, behind Bly was in this game. Because it really is. It really is kind of one of those scenarios where he took a lot of damage early. And yes, Creator didn't end the game. He let Bly continue. But when there's already four carriers on the map and you're just now maybe threatening for the first time with Brood Lords... That's when you kind of know the Pros has just had the freedom to do whatever they please over the last few minutes of the game. That is very much so the case here. Not even a warp prism top side. A couple of immortals always kind of one of those units which later in the game actually do want to be kind of phased out. You know, you generally want Archons to fight against this more air-based army. There's not really much need for immortals, so immortals kind of get used to just kind of trade out against, well, you know, a base, maybe a tech structure. For example, if you can pick off the Great Aspire, which is kind of exactly where he's rallied to. That would be an amazing uh, job done. You just start talking that down. And a couple of Zara Warp ins. I think you can get it done. He actually only literally has one Zara Warp in. It's going to be enough. Greatest by a fall. So no more Brood Lords to be made. 
These couple of immortals are on a bit of a journey themselves. Doesn't look as though they've actually found too much. This attack up to the top side is cleaned out, but it did cost them the Great Aspire. And now we see another Aspire starting to build up. It's a long way to go from nothing at all. Well, with no Aspire into Great Aspire, so... A little while before more broods can be made, so Bly's kind of stuck with what he's got. Sure, you can still add on some investors, etc. This fight has to be so good anyways, because Kray is the one of the bank. He's the one that's able to rebuild here. If the opportunity arises, here we go. A couple of storms coming down. Those lords and the queen just trying to back away right now. Going to see this hatchery get picked off as well. Oracle comes forward, drops a revelation. The brood lords getting tagged right there. And Creator just pulling back just a little bit right now. A bit more in towards the center of the map. So... Going out in towards the center, just sort of repositioning, thinking about where he wants to attack into next. He's going to target the Brutals down with the carriers. One, two Brutals going down instantly. Some storms on the army in the back. He feedbacks a couple of the investors. They go down as well. There's just nothing that's actually dealing damage to these interceptors right now. The Hydras aren't cutting it. I mean, I can tell you that much. The Fungal Groves obviously just aren't there because the investors dropped so quick. Small counterattack from Bly is at least finding some damage over here as we are going to be seeing. Those few, uh, this Nexus starting to go down. A few TTs being warped in slowly because that pylon isn't actually close enough to the Nexus. Small mistake. Storm drops. The interceptors continue to jump on forwards, and we are going to be seeing a lot more damage continue to be dealt right now as we're going to see Broodlords continue to be targeted down as well. And that just means the ground army can just have such a better time as well moving onwards. These lurkers are starting to drop, and well, there really just isn't anything else to say about it, guys. Bly has been behind from the very early stages of this game, from the first few adepts, from the first oracles, and he really has since then been able to stay alive, been able to stay in it, but has he been able to really, you know, have a chance to take Crater down? Not really. Crater is defended against the counterattacks well. He's not allowed Bly to buy himself too much time. He's not allowed Bly to, you know, just sort of take random fights that he should never really be able to take. Here you go. If the Corrupt is coming in, he goes on top of the army, so the Storms will come down and friendly fire a little bit if they do drop. It looks as though the carrier numbers are just good enough anyways. Picking their way through those Corruptors one at a time. Corruptors are gone. And that is GG. Creator takes game number two. And his